Good evening, my friends, and welcome back to the Retrofit Hot Seat, the long-awaited episode 13. Now, some of you may be aware, but the actual hot seat itself uh, currently has been cancelled. The entire group was fucking nuked from orbit by Legend of Total War, and that's something we can talk about at a later date. I don't know if you guys are interested in my point of view. I really don't have much of an opinion on the matter, but if you guys want me to talk about the whole thing, then I can do. Um, but first and foremost, I really want to put out the remaining turns of the hot seat, because I know a lot of you guys want to see it. I, I get co comments, not constantly, but uh, frequently enough that it's it's been on my mind. So, without further ado, we are going to begin turn number 13, but I do just have to warn you that I am, I am actually re-recording this. Somehow I lost the footage or it didn't record properly in the first place. I can't quite recall what happened. What happened to the footage? I don't know. I can't quite recall, but I'm trying to... My God, I don't know. I've sat here for the past half hour, 45 minutes. I feel like a fucking crime scene investigator. Like CSI New York or Miami or there's another one. The original CSI, which was in uh, Las Vegas, I guess. But basically what I've had to do is load up my turn 14 and I don't, I don't even have the footage for 14 either if I recall correctly so I'm gonna have to recreate that as well but what I've had to do is load turn 14 load turn 13 compare the two and and f spot the differences it was the mo it was like a four-dimensional game of where's Waldo and the reason I feel like a crime scene investigator is because I'm, I'm trying to spot the smallest detail and I'm trying to piece together <laughs> like uh, the the actual crime in action, like I'm finding drops of blood, and the directionality tells me that it was a hammer strike from a fucking a overhead or something like that. That's how obscene this has been, and I have I'm I've done it. I've solved the riddle, and I've solved the crime. Uh, I just have to say that what a fucking ramble that was. My God, <laughs> I just have to say that this is going to be extremely different in tone from the rest of the series, um, just because I'm not... Now, like when I was recording previously, I was recording for my viewers, but I was also recording for my opponents, so there was a lot of him hawing there was a lot of, a lot of misdirection. Um, maybe you guys, you, you may not have noticed, because I don't want to, you know, toot my own horn here, but I tried to make it very subtle, and I tried to mask my plans a lot. Um, I mean, for example, the turn before last, turn 11, I was talking about how I wanted to demilitarize. But essentially, I, I, I knew that I was going to declare war, but I hadn't had a target picked out yet. And then turn 12 rolls around, and I did have a target. Um, but saying that I was going to demilitarize, I think, felt it felt like it was uh, valuable at the time. Anyway, I'm just rambling on again. What I'm trying to say is that I'm no longer talking about things that I was doing in the future in like a misty sense, trying not to give too much away, but trying to keep it entertaining. What I'm now doing is explaining my current actions in the sense that I knew exactly what I was doing. So it, it's going to be different in tone here. But without further ado, let's fucking begin. First things first, we have a message from the Tripolian Council of Egypt, which is just like a... a a steaming shit pile of a name. Tripolian Council? What the fuck does that even mean? It's like Napoleon's third son. Hi, I'm Tripolian. <laughs> um, I recall that Egypt asked for reinforcements and I basically told him to go slobber my knob um, and cup the balls, but uh, he's responded, Dear Moors, I know history has not been the best between us, but my old sultan, Farah. Lord was not the greatest. My rule so far is short, but I will take your advice. Egypt will not fall. But of course it does, because um, you guys may not know this, but at the time, uh, Venice and Sicily were basically racing to capture the cities. And I was unaware of this at the time. I didn't realize this was happening until, I want to say a turn, I want to say until turn 14 or turn 15. What I was doing on turn 13 was getting ready actually to invade France. Because I had been approached by uh, the Scots as well as 
Denmark as well as the Holy Romans. We were going to have a coalition, and it basically fell to Scotland and myself as the allies of the French, as you can see. Uh, and the HRE was the ally as well. Although I think the Holy Romans were having troubles with uh, Venice as well as Denmark. So I'm not sure when those two were going to jump in. But it basically fell to Scotland and myself to, to attack France. And this seemed like a very, very good plan. Because my border with France, very lightly defended. He's got 12 men in Pamplona, 11 men in this fort here. Um, and then Zaragoza, I think it's a full... A full unit of spear militia or something like that. Um, but I was... I think even on turn 11 I knew that this was going to happen because I was talking about sending spies to Milan and everything. Um, but it was it was to spy on France. This guy, I said, was going to go up to uh, Denmark. He was actually going to go to Paris. Um, and then this dude was, of course, just going to go to Bordeaux. And uh, yeah, that's that's about it. I was I was getting ready to invade France, so um, yeah, very lightly defended. Toulouse has one unit. Bordeaux has one unit. Uh, Angers has one unit. So it's it's basically the entire western half of France, extremely lightly defended. Because as I, if I remember correctly, France was marching on Milan. They had fuck tons of men over <laughs> near Milan, and there was a bit up north. I think in like. Paris and I, I guess just Paris. France was extremely thin, uh, I, I guess, because he's been dieting. You know, I have to I have to give France his props. He's been cutting calories. He's been walking like I don't know half an hour a day, up from his usual twenty. And he's he's really he's really thin now. It's great. He's like Bradley Cooper, um, after having filmed American Sniper. You know, after after he like shed all that fucking muscle mass. Okay. Um, the, the way that I rationalize this to myself is that France, I don't want to say was a bad ally, but it's just that they were hardly an ally at all. I did originally call them to attack Spain, um, but I, it, from my point of view, they, just, they were going to do it anyway, um, and they were just very opportunistic. They swept in, they, they swooped in, rather, like a huck or a vulture. No, a vulture would swoop in, you know. No, I, I guess actually a vulture is, a, is the perfect term because he swooped in after the war was basically over, captured Pamplona, captured Zaragoza, and then refused any sort of diplomacy to give me either of these cities. If he had given me these two cities, or at least one of them, or some sort of treaty where we don't put forces on the border, none of this happened. It was basically like, hey, I took the cities, talk to you never. Um, <laughs> so I was rationalizing it rationalizing it in that way that he was an opportunistic uh, foe because I mean France is basically the most powerful faction at this point in time so this is why the coalition was formed we needed to to knock him down a peg so to that end I actually moved a bunch That's of forces around I had said I was gonna move this guy to Leon but he was actually gonna come of over here Sultan. build a fort Tomorrow's boom I said I was gonna move this guy to Leon and I was actually going to pretend that that was the case but what's gonna happen next turn is I'm gonna put him in this fort <laughs> I want to put Admiral Rushdie over here uh, over by Leon because we are eventually gonna pick up some troops uh, we're gonna move these guys over to Leon these two units of Spear Militia. Uh, Sultan Miswar. I did have big plans for him, but it just turns out his Jihad is, is just a massive pain in the ass. Uh, I do want to recruit some more troops. Especially cavalry. I want lots and lots of cavalry for my upcoming war. Um, because... Oh, I moved the wrong unit there. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> I want lots and lots of cavalry because... I can just fucking mop up with my cheap, cheap cavalry. I can micro the shit out of them on the battle map. Um, and just wreak havoc. That, I think, is one of the strengths of the Moorish uh, lineup. is just their cheap as shit cavalry. And that's what you feed them, is just bricks of feces. That's why they're so cheap. Maybe like some maggots every once in a while if you're feeling like they need protein. Anyway, um, I built a fort here to block the road to Zaragoza, but I don't want it to be too weak. So I'm going to put a unit of Desert Cav in here. I also want the Desert Cav to be able to strike out if there's any sort of problem. At the time, 
I wasn't quite sure what Fran where France stood, um, but I definitely did not want to tip him off that I was attacking him. And here's actually what's happening. Um, I'm telling France that I'm going to build armies to join his war against Milan. I'm going to seize uh, Corsica and Sardinia, Ajaccio, and I can't recall if there's a settlement on this island here. But that's what I'm telling him. I'm telling France that I'm going to build some armies to, to, to join his war with Milan. And this actually was the, the treaty we, we agreed upon. I was going to capture Ajaccio, maybe Milan, whatever this city is here, and then trade them for Pamplona and Zaragoza. Whether he was going to do that or not, I don't believe that was going to happen. I don't really know if that's the case or not. But what that has done is given me cover Good to... Time essentially increase my military power uh through like I, i'm gonna drop all of my cash essentially into building units and it's maybe gonna look suspicious to him but the entire time you gotta remember i'm communicating with him i'm saying hey i have an army in valencia i'm gonna set sail i'm gonna head to milan all this stuff um and that was my cover sicily i think at one point had talked about um, supporting me in attacking France, but I'm very certain that he was trying to distract me from what's going on in the Holy Land. Uh, actually, he did provoke me into attacking France. He he messaged me and was like, yo, you gotta get in there. Um, I heard there's a coalition, this sort of thing, if I remember correctly. Now, I, I do have to say, this was months ago, so if it if someone says something different, it's quite possible that's how it happened and I'm misremembering. But I do remember being very suspicious of Sicily because they were provoking me into attacking France when they themselves were gobbling up territory in the Holy Lands. So turns after this, either turn 14, turn 15, I discover their actions in the Holy Lands. I'm thinking he wants me to be distracted so that he can capture as much territory, destroy Egypt, swing back, possibly regroup while I'm tied up in a war with France, and then he can pick and choose his battles, which is, I think, exactly what was going to happen. Uh, anyway, so I'm trying to get Kasim into Valencia. I'm trying to build an army in Valencia, but I do need some units to garrison either Valencia itself or whatever we've captured. Um, I've got some forces in a fort. I want to move some archers there. I... I basically decided that I would have a a sieging army supported by a cavalry army. And the cavalry army would kind of swing around supporting the field army which would besiege settlements. And the same thing for Toledo here. This is why I'm recruiting all this cavalry. Uh, I want one general to uh, act as a cavalry commander. I want the other to act as um, an infantry uh, uh, a siege man. A siege woman, uh, I guess, you know, if you want to, to... I'm not judging, you know, if, if you want to outwardly present yourself as a woman whilst besieging uh, Valencia, uh, well, not Valencia, but Zaragoza, I mean, that's fine. Welcome to the Moorish army. <laughs> um, I also expected that I would come into conflict with the Italians, be it Venice or Sicily, very soon, which is why I'm pumping out ships basically every single turn. Um, I think Sicily basically had twice the navy I did, but I was thinking if I could... Uh, ba I assumed that once I blitzkrieged France, because that was the plan, I was going to blitzkrieg France, because I have... Um, two or three besieging armies, and then two cavalry armies, I think in the end, by turn 15, turn 16, rather, ready to go. Here's the thing, as soon as the hot seat ended, that's when I was going to attack France. It's very depressing. Um, if at all possible, I want to actually get the turn 16 save file, and then I want to get the password and play out turn 16 as if it never ended, just for the closure. I just want to see how successful my plan would have been. Anyway, this is basically all we need to do this turn. I did uh, build a garrison quarter in Valencia because I need, I do need infantry. As as powerful as my cavalry is, I do eventually need 
infantry, and I actually have extra cash. Why is it I have extra cash? Um, I've recruited in, let's see, Valencia, we have a peasant. Cordoba has a militiaman, does it? No, here it is. That's the extra gold. There we go. So I spent all my gold. I've built a garrison quarter in Valencia because I assume Valencia is going to be a very important city, being on the coast and being a castle. I need garrison quarters to pump out infantry, especially uh, these Berber spearmen. They would be the first of their kind in our armies. Some professional spearmen. I have a bunch of cavalry brewing in Algiers, ready to be shipped out by sea. I have a bunch of uh, cavalry brewing in Valencia and Toledo, ready to storm and crush France. I have some infantry coming from the uh, from the rear of the nation, ready to reinforce. Um, unfortunately, Sultan Miswar, um, he's useless. I think his army gets whittled away over the turns as the uh, jihad is, is it, it's not coming to a close. So he's essentially useless. And I think I do move him around because I didn't realize to what extent his army was dwindling, but A, what have you. Now on the topic of jihad, I've, I tried to talk my way into Tripoli, but Sicily was basically having none of it. I wanted to sail like two units over here, capture it, and return back to uh, Spain and give Tripoli back. I just wanted to end the Jihad, pay some gold to do so, that kind of thing, but Sicily was having none of it. Uh, one of his counter offers was that I trade Tripoli for like Algiers or Granada, which to me is a non-option, and I'm not sure if he thought that was a good deal or if he was just saying crazy shit for the sake of saying stuff. You know, it's not actual diplomacy, but it's um, it's almost as if we have diplomacy. It's it's not actual diplomacy, but it's not not diplomacy, if that makes sense. Um, anyway, yeah, relations between myself and Sicily. Um, warm on the exterior, extremely cool in the center. He was always a very slippery devil. <laughs> And I was always, always mistrustful of him, probably more than anyone on my radar, I guess. Uh, so that's essentially it for turn 13. I can't recall if I sent any messages or not. Um, I think I did respond to Egypt, basically saying, sorry, bruh, sorry, bruh, but I, I don't remember. Anyway, um, I'm going to end this episode, and I probably will just go right into turn 14 if if I can reconstruct that as easily as I did he well it wasn't easy let's let's be honest but uh, yeah we're about to attack France we're building an army in Valencia to attack I believe Zaragoza we're building an army in Toledo to attack Pamplona we're moving forces in the north to swing around over through the Bay of Biscay towards Bordeaux and we're actually building an army in Algiers that's gonna land I think I decided on either near Milan itself to push the French back or near Marseille, cutting Marseille off and then ultimately capturing Marseille um, on its lonesome. The thing to watch here is the, are these, these two French armies. We've God got with you, dear ally. Bohemond de Vendôme, which is an entirely cavalry army, in which that's basically what I wanted to do. I wanted to intercept these guys with my armies. Um as he moves eastward towards Milan. And then Prince Louis is the remnants of his invasion force into Spain, and he also moves eastward, and I think ultimately he settles in Toulouse. But I was thinking I could do some force drawouts with these guys, these kinds of things. It was going to be very interesting. Now, I believe next turn as well, I begin to infiltrate these, these settlements. Uh, I may even have some agents to move around. Let's see, do I have some spies of some kind? Uh, I think... I feel as if I'm missing one. We have one in Zaragoza, one in Toulouse, Bordeaux, Angers... Toledo. Oh, yes, this guy. This guy just moved like this. That's all. Oh, he didn't move <laughs> at all. Did he? What the fuck? Where did he move? You guys, am I freaking out? Or what the fuck just happened there? <laughs> Where are you? 
Oh, you're in this army? This army? Orders? Yes, you're in this army. Okay, well, that's... That freaked me out momentarily. I felt like I was just <laughs> losing my fucking mind. All right, guys. This is the state of the game as it is right now. I, I hope you enjoyed it as much as the previous ones, but I understand if you didn't because there's layers of it missing. There's layers and subtext and all this, you know, this sort of stuff missing as I'm trying to mislead and, and whatnot. But, uh, as I said, I hope it was just as enjoyable, if not more, because now you, you realize that I'm going to be attacking France and you now have something to look forward to. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Um, and, uh, I will see you guys later when we do turn 14. I don't actually have to save it or anything like that, but we can pretend. Oh, shit, I forgot to move my... <laughs> I forgot to move my merchants. And the sad thing about this, too, is I spent all game trying to get those merchants onto those resource nodes, and it never happened. <laughs> There's so much unresolved emotions tied up in this hot seat. Damn you! Legend of Total War! <laughs> but, again, that's a... That's a video for another time. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you all with turn 14. Rest in peace, Retrofit Hot Seat.